we're going back to Design 101 for today's video as we're going to be discussing what the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of your title represents and how it, along with the core gameplay loop, is going to be the prime determining factor as to whether or not people are going to keep playing your game and of course enjoy it after they first experience it. When we talk about the concept of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of your title, this really is an extension of the core gameplay loop, or the primary game system that somebody is going to experience. When we say moment-to-moment, -moment, we're just going to refer to it as end-to-end -to, -end to make this easier for me. We're talking about what the player is doing at any given second of a normal play of their game, or what is going to be like if you had to drill down the basic experience of your game, that's what the M to M is. And to give you some examples, if we talk about platforming or Mario, platforming would be the core gameplay loop. Running, jumping, avoiding enemies would be the moment to moment gameplay. If we're talking Dark Souls, again, the M to M would be the action based combat, upgrading your character, going through menus, etc. And while this doesn't sound like an important distinction, it really becomes one of those devil is in the details kind of topics when it comes to a lot of titles, especially those that have very unique gameplay loops or try to do different things or systems within them. Now, the footage that you're seeing over there is from Dead Cells. And Dead Cells is an example of a game that has some amazing M to M gameplay. It feels right in your hands, the controls are responsive, you feel like a pro when you survive. But I had an issue with the persistent layer around it. I didn't like how the game handled the different difficulty settings. And that is a topic for another day. But our first question for this video is can you think of titles that had really great M to M but kind of struggled with the things surrounding it? But when we talk about the M to M of a title, this goes into a lot of the elements of the UI and general playability of a game. Now in past videos and discussions, I've talked about how I've gone to the point where a game only has really 15 to 30 minutes to convince me to keep playing it. And a large part of that is the M to M. If I'm not enjoying your game at the basic level, again, why should I stick with it for hours or days or who knows how long it's going to take to actually beat it. And this was one of the major points about why a lot of the MMOs that came out during the big craze of the last decade just completely uh, missed me. Because a lot of MMO design is built on the abstracted long form progression. When you play World of Warcraft, you're not necessarily concerning yourself with what you're doing at level 2. You're thinking about what's going to happen when you get your next milestone. What's the end game stuff like? What are the social options? How is my guild going to work? And so on and so forth. You're not really thinking about my characters walking around a little field mining ore for the last hour and a half. And when the M to M doesn't work for a title, it's not always a damning thing. It is for me, but like I said, there are a lot of people who will focus on the long form of a game, especially with many titles being released today that have focused on long form persistent elements. And this is a major part, again, of a lot of the roguelikes and lights that we've seen this past year. And I'm sorry, and beyond that, that you're building this game around the replayable nature of the persistent elements or the procedural. So the general gameplay, or again the M to M, is usually kept very basic because in order to accommodate for a very large or a very high amount of variance in terms of procedural generation, you have to make sure that the general gameplay is kept simplified. So it would be a lot harder, for instance, to design a game that would test the player along the same lines of something like Super Mario Odyssey. Given that the M to M features a lot of different jumps and movement tech around Mario, and in that regard, it's better to have the levels be handmade. 
Now, again, if you're doing with or you're dealing with anything that deals with puzzles or a specific experience, handmade usually works better. But that still doesn't excuse or downplay the importance of the M to M for a title. And we're going to switch to some footage in the next minute or so, where I'm going to talk about a game that has a really great persistence, but the M to M started to annoy or get in the way of that. And again, when we're talking about the basics of your gameplay and playability, this really all goes back to the importance of playtesting. You need to get people with fresh eyes to look at your game and see where they're failing or struggling to learn your game. It, again, it doesn't matter if people love your game 30, 50, 100 hours in, if a lot of people are put off in the first hour of play. And conversely, if you get somebody invested in your game past that opening, they're going to be more willing to stick with it. And as an even better point, if they start to run into little issues or nitpicks, they're more likely to keep playing and muscle through them as opposed to just immediately saying, I don't want to deal with this, I'm turning the game off. And again, this is why I said a few minutes ago that the first 15 to 30 minutes of a game are vital to me. Because if things are annoying me in that short span of time, that's not going to go away. If I find annoying UI problems or your game is hard to play, those things aren't going to magically disappear at hour 15 and 20 of your title. And this is again why so many developers say that the very first level of your game should be the last one designed. Because you want that first play or that first experience to be dynamite. But with that said, we're going to do a quick shout out to our current Game Wisdom Patreon supporters and sponsors. And when we return, I want to talk about a game that has a really good persistent element to it, but the general moment to moment started to just get in the way of that. And now for a quick thank you to our current Game Wisdom sponsors and Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to continue the discussion on game design, be sure to check out our Discord channel, link down below. This is footage of Children of Morta, an action roguelike that we've been playing on and off on the stream, and I should have a video and review up as soon as the embargo lifts. But this is a game that features a really great persistence system in terms of how characters progress. You have a family of adventurers, with each one having their own skill tree, as you saw there. As members level up, they'll apply or they'll unlock buffs for everybody else, and the game gives a really great incentive to mix and match or play different characters as opposed to just focusing on one. The game features a lovingly crafted pixel style as you can see right here, and everything about the game is built around that long form of persistence. However, my problem I've been running into is that I'm finding the M to M begins to fall or trail behind the persistent elements. Each biome of the game doesn't have a lot of variance to it, and the general core gameplay of combat and controlling your characters doesn't really evolve in the same way as we saw with a game like The Binding of Isaac or Dead Cells. And this was kind of the inspiration for our video and the importance of M to M. When I think about the very best roguelikes and roguelites I've played, they've all had one thing in common, and that was the game provide enough variance to make the M to M different on each play. Maybe I picked up some crazy new power in Buying of Isaac, and now my shot is a boomerang. In Dead Cells, instead of using a sword, I picked up the Spartan boot and I just started kicking people into walls and off ledges. The point is that something occurs in-game that forces me to adapt and change my playstyle. Not do the same exact thing, but just changing or shuffling the elements around it. This was another similar issue that I had with the game Deadwood that I really liked as kind of a horror roguelike design. That even though the world was procedural and you had different, uh, basically, attacks that occur at night, what I'm doing from each in-game day does not change. And this is a problem that a lot of games suffer with with the M to M. 
and when you're trying to balance that with any kind of long form or persistent elements. That if all I'm doing is staying the same and nothing is changing, then that is on par, in my opinion, with a lot of action-based titles that become repetitive because they don't introduce any new elements to it. This is an essential part of the Mario experience, and how every world, level, course, you name it, changes or mixes up the general gameplay to make the player adapt to changes. Whether it's Mario having to ride automated platforms, jumping and moving around on lava, and you name it. But with something like Children of Morta, th this is the weird point. That, again, the core gameplay loop of the title is great. I have no problems with that. But my issue is that the general play of this game, or again, what I'm doing M to M, becomes very repetitive. So that even if the controls are great, even though I'm enjoying what's there, the game is starting to lose, or I'm starting to lose my interest with it. And this is again kind of like our mission statement or the core lesson for our video. That the moment to moment of your title is vital alongside your core gameplay loop in order to keep people invested. As a really great case in point, we can look at the Battle Royale genre. Games such as Fortnite, PUBG, and uh, again, so many more others out there, that while they do have persistent elements to them, they are not gameplay affecting, or they shouldn't be. You're getting new costumes and gun skins and emotes and all that, and that doesn't really keep somebody playing it. But why, where these games work is that the M to M is such an exhilarating experience that it's really like we could argue maybe 10 to 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more or less depending on the game itself, but that is highly concentrated and focused. That run is going to keep you exhilarated, it's going to keep you invested in it, and then you're going to do it all again and have another experience. And we can draw parallels to, again, the very best roguelikes, like Spelunky, Buying of Isaac, and so on. Spelunky being another good example, that the number of factors that make up a procedurally generated level in Spelunky aren't as complicated as a game like Dead Cells or any 3D-based title. But the reason why they work is that the game is so focused on that platforming gameplay loop that however the levels are designed is going to give you a fresh experience and it's going to keep that M to M varied. With Battle Royale, again, you're dealing with handmade hard-coded maps, but who you're playing against and where you're going on that map change the M to M and again, keep the player guessing. And if you can do that and do it reliably on each playthrough, then you're going to have a game that's going to keep people coming back again and again. And this is often why a lot of the more or a lot of the more addicting video games or addictive have a very small gameplay loop or small moment to moment, maybe five to twenty minutes at most, but it's an engaging and replayable gameplay loop that's just going to keep being different on each play. Again, with Buying of Isaac, a simple run through that game can be maybe 30 to 50 minutes. But I can guarantee you that each time you play, you're getting a completely different experience of that. Same goes for FTL, and again, we can just start naming titles. And to begin to wrap things up, when you're thinking about the M to M of your title, you want to be looking at how people respond not only to the first play of your game, but if they're still invested in multiple plays of it. Now, not every game can be played like that. If we're talking about a 30 hour plus RPG, then we're looking at more or less the long form of that play. Again, how are they keeping themselves playing or invested after all that time? But you still want to look at how somebody is playing your game. 
Are they struggling with UI elements? Are they starting to feel bored? Are they not doing something after their first run of it? And these are all important aspects of your title. Because again, somebody, if they're frustrated with your game very early on, they're not going to want to stick with it. And the very best titles are the ones that deliver, and then they just keep delivering for them. So my final question for you, as we said in the first part, with a game that had a really great uh, moment to moment but not good with persistence, can you think of other examples of games that had a really good form of persistence that kept people playing despite maybe not having the best M to M? Let me know in the comments below, but thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to check back for more discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where exactly are in the science of games. And as always, be sure to check out the Discord and Patreon link down below. But until next time, have a great night. If you're looking for a book on design, my first title, 20 Essential Games to Study, is out now. It is available where most books are sold, and it comes in paper, hardcover, or digital copies. This is the perfect book for anyone interested in learning about game design, whether you are a student, enthusiast, or just a fan. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design, and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.